Hi there, this is Nick. And I'm Ben. And this is our playthrough of How Coyote Got His Fur Coat, the demo edition. So, what we decided to do for our class is we created a short story that was a coyote tale. Um, we were thinking of different ways that we wanted to actually go about presenting this to the class, and eventually what we settled on, which is kind of a unique idea, is we were going to present it in the form of a video game. So, needless to say, we've been working on it pretty hard over the past semester, but like, you know, time crunches, that kind of thing, it isn't quite complete yet. So we thought we'd just give you guys kind of like the developer's walkthrough of what we have so far, just so you can take a look at it and see some of the work we've put in. Alright, so you got your fancy title screen here. Uh, I'm going to press enter now. <laughs> okay. So as it scrolls down, you see the narrator, who is kind of an anonymous figure, sitting in front of this fire. And here there's going to be some dialogue from Coyote and the narrator, with uh, the narrator eventually telling the story, which takes form of the game that you play. So we'll get right into it. We don't have the dialogue here, as you notice. Yeah. So just kind of the setup for these kind of stories, usually it's the uh, new coyote talking to the narrator, and the narrator will tell new coyote kind of a, a cautionary tale about old coyote. So that's kind of the setup for these kind of stories. Alright, so this is our first screen here. You see coyote walking around. It's a nice walking animation. <laughs> and... Uh, few directions you can go from the first screen here. Uh, I'll just point out. Wow, that looks pretty great. Yeah, a couple layers on the scenery there. A real sense of depth for sure. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna wander over this way. So we got some automatopoeia happening here, and you can see the dialogue kind of Coyote's inner thoughts going on in the bottom left of the screen. Yeah, that's kind of going to be like where we put the objectives for where you're supposed to be going. Or maybe if you come across an object and you have your own thoughts about it, you'll be able to see Coyote's thoughts as well. So, I wander up here. There's going to be lots of different areas that you can walk to. And just the setup for the story is the fact that um, you're going to be able to revisit these areas a few times because you're going to be running errands, and that's kind of like the main story. So every time you revisit them, you might find a new little tidbit of information or dialogue that you can revisit, that kind of thing. And I think, Ben, you mentioned that this will actually be the first screen in the game, in the final version. <clears throat> You'll have Coyote sleeping here, and she'll be woken up by the noises you see down here. Yep, that is true. So that'll be the first screen after the first title screen there. So you'll just be walking around the bend of this uh, river here as you will demonstrate right now. <laughs> so you'll have to cross this little bridge and head down to the bottom because coyotes can't walk on water. Alright. So here we are. Well, what is this? What's this racket all about is what coyote is thinking right now. So now we're going to go investigate this arrow, which brings us to the trader who is in the process of building <laughs> his trading post. And it seems he's having uh, quite a time with this single piece of wood. Oh yeah, absolutely. So as you approach the trader, you see this exclamation point, which appears over his head. So this is how you'll interact with uh, things throughout the game is when you see this you'll know you can just press the space bar or another button and that's how you'll interact with it so let's talk to the trader here what kind of game are you playing there looks like fun and when you see the blinking arrow at the bottom you know you can progress to the next line of dialogue so you have trader laughing I'm not playing a game. This is industry. I'm building a trading post. So, obviously the dialogue will eventually continue from there. 
and the trader will ask Coyote to go fetch some more wood to build a trading post. So basically there's a few little kind of running kind of quests you have to do to make the storyline progress. So the first thing the trader asks you to do is to get the wood so he can build his trading post. And if you walk to the left, Nick, it will show that the same scene, what it looks like after you've completed that little mission for him. So as you see now, we've got a log cabin, we've got a little fence, got a nice little barrel that you can uh, walk in front of. Very nice. And uh, later on in the game, he also asks you to get some stone. So as soon as you get the trader his stone, the whole situation changes again. And this time we get a really luxurious take on what things are looking like. We got this trademark happening right here. So obviously the trader is doing really well with uh, his exchanges with Coyote. And yeah, as you can perhaps infer, that there's probably some symbolism here on capitalism and whatnot. But uh, that's up to the, the game player to to take out of it. It's never going to be explicitly said. So yeah, you got your nice trademark here, and I guess we'll go back and investigate the other scenes we have here. Yeah, we do have a few other scenes in this uh, little demo that we have set up here. So as I, we'd mentioned before, one of the first things that you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go and get wood for beaver. So the route that you would take is you would obviously follow the river, because that's where beaver would be. So you just kind of follow it along the bend here. and uh, There'd probably be an, another thought bubble appearing at this point, maybe from Coyote saying, My friend beaver is just down the river, or something like that, just to guide you along instead of wandering aimlessly. So. Let's go down here. And this is kind of in the style, there's a few old school games that were all about finding one item to unlock a door and that kind of thing. They were called adventure games. So this is kind of in the style of that. So reaching the end here, we do have a beaver sprite, he's not in there right now. But there would be beaver and you would talk to him and from there you would gather wood with him and make your way back to the trading post and that's just kind of how the game would progress. So that's, I think that's pretty much all we have built into the demo right now, isn't it, Nick? Yeah, I think that's it. One more thing I want to show is, uh... Oh, this is really important. <laughs> a little glitch with the walking. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have the ability to moonwalk. Which, which looks pretty great, yeah. Pretty stylish way to get around. It's a little glitch we discovered. But anyways, that's an aside. I think we have some other stuff to bring up here. Yeah, so like uh, we'd mentioned before, um, if we just uh, go up on the game here, you'll notice that uh, there's a little passage where you could walk up this way, and where this would lead you, it would lead you through the forest and to the prairie, and for the second, I guess you could call it, chapter of this story, you're supposed to go and find buffalo to get some rubbing stones from him so that the trader can build his fancy, super fancy trading post. So we haven't implemented the actual scenes into the game yet, but the scenes have already been drawn. So here we have the forest, so you would be walking through the forest here. The next location you'd go to would be coming out of the forest right here, so this is the prairies. We've got another nice scene of prairies, add in a couple lumps of rocks or whatever, or buffalo crap or whatever it's supposed to be. And then, <laughs> and then here would be the rubbing stones, and Buffalo has also been drawn, and he could be in here as well. And this is where you would interact with Buffalo, and once again progress the story so that you could come to the, uh, the next chapter. And if you're more interested in knowing what that story was, we're going to post that in the group as well, so you can look up that. So we also had another group member involved with this, her name was Kat, and she was working on some other things that we were going to implement in the game. I'm not too sure if you want to just quickly outline what we were going to use these for, these descriptions and pictures. Okay, so there was going to be a number of items that were kind of going to be scattered at random throughout the game. So as you come across them, you can just interact with them, and a uh, screen would pop up with a picture and some information and then there's going to be some sort of scoring system for interacting with these objects and they're all going to be sort of traditional uh, aboriginal related things 
So just the idea that we would be progressing the story and telling the story, but there's lots of things for you to do in the meantime to improve your score, whatever that would mean in the context of a trickster tale. Yeah, so the, a high score doesn't necessarily mean you win. I'm sure there's going to be some sort of yeah trick at the end, something like that. But yeah, um, we just wanted to walk you through what we've done so far. I think this is a project that we are both committed to finishing. So there may be a time when we'll submit this and you might have a chance to play it completely, but we just, you know, with time constraints, we just wanted to show you what we've been working on and what we've finished so far. And we're both, I think, quite happy with what we have right now. Absolutely. All right, well, thank you very much for your time, guys, and enjoy your summer. Adios.